Hello and welcome. I'm Kushlani Alis, an undergraduate of the Food Science and Technology Department. The Sabrigamu University Food Science and Technology Association is pleased to announce the launch of an online seminar series featuring food industry experts sharing their knowledge and experience to enrich our undergraduate learning process. In this inaugural episode, we are glad to host Mr. Nuan Dharmadasa, one of our distinguished alumni, to talk on food ingredients technology, focusing on the recent trends and future perspectives. We earnestly thank you for accepting our invitation to deliver a talk. Mr. Nuan is a food industry professional with over 10 years of business to business, technical, commercial and managerial experience in local and international markets, covering a wide spectrum of roles from concept to commercialization of products and solutions. He received his B.Sc. Honours degree in Food Science and Technology from Sabarigama University of Sri Lanka and Master in Business Administration from University of Sri Jayavardhanapura. After several successful industrial assignments in leading local and international food industry establishments, in the year 2017, he joined Orana IS, Denmark, a supply of fruit-based raw materials and semi manufacturers, where he is currently working as the area sales manager for Bangladesh, Pakistan and Sri Lanka. So now on, the lecture will be conducted by Mr. Nuan Dharma. So that's how that's uh, that's the first point. Ingredient manufacturing engage extensively innovation because they must do it. And then ingredients driven by consumer trends. The today, if you see what consumers need, some consumers they have diabetes. Some consumers are obese, so they don't want any fatty food. So some people are diabetic, so they don't want any high sugar products. So they want to reduce the carbohydrates intake. So because of different, different consumer trends and the younger people, they will need more experience. Okay, they want to do more energy drinks or they want to do, they want to eat a nice cheesecake in a restaurant or a coffee shop and they want a coffee with tiramisu syrup. So because of different, different things, the consumer trends, the food ingredients industry is more, more driven by them. And then the other one, you get in the ingredient industry from single ingredient to ingredient blends. What does this mean? So you can get, if you want, say, if you, if you want, uh, if I talk in my current job, if you want pro frozen strawberry, then we can give you frozen strawberry. And also if you tell us, we want to use this strawberry in an ice cream. So we will convert it into a foam blended with other flavors, colors, stabilizers to use in the ice cream. So you can get either single ingredient or you can get single ingredient blends. Also, if you want mango and peach, so we can give you mango and peach separately. But if you want us to do the blend, we will do mango and peach in a nice blend, which will be really appealing, taste-wise very balanced, and we can do it. So this this is also a thing in food ingredients industry it does. And then in the food ingredients industry, because of the development of ingredients, there's a shift in R and D to application at the end uh, at and the end product manufacturer. If I put it into context, this is what I said before. When ingredient manufacturer, they develop the ingredient, so they do all the application and they find the way, okay, how it works, what benefit it gives. And then they straight away go to the end product manufacturer and say, look, 
If you use this, you get this benefit. So the end product manufacturer, they have nothing to do in R&D. They just need to apply, just follow what the manufacturer says and see what he says is true in their own experience. So this has supported a lot to the end product manufacturers in various ways. One thing, they have can reduce the time spent on R&D and they can speed up the product to the market because if they want something and if they know, okay, this particular English company can help to solve their problem, they can just give them a call. Look, we want to solve this, can you help? So they will do it much, much faster because they, they, they are more knowledgeable about the ingredients. So there is a shift in R&D to application. The previous, in the, in the past, if you say, most of the companies, they wanted to do all R&D by themselves. But now, the companies, when they have the problem, they will call an ingredient company and say, look, we have this problem, can you help us to solve? So the R&D is done by the ingredient manufacturer. The next, next one, the tailor-made or bespoke development. If a, comp if a, a company wants, say we want to do a strawberry drinking yogurt, or we want to do a chicken sausage with 40% fat, and we want to do a German style uh, burger, or sorry, the German style sausage, breakfast sausage. You call the seasoning company, and you will tell, okay, we want to do 40% sausage with, with uh, some herbs in it, and please don't give it to anybody else. So you can, it, it is facilitated by the ingredient companies. Okay, they will do the product, and if you say, okay, we are happy with this product, then there will be a either mutual agreement or on the document agreement, we will not give it to anybody. So they will develop the product as you want. And the other ways, so you want to develop products to suit in your production facilities, the, the companies. So for instance, there is a, drinking yogurt manufacturing company, those who can fill, those who want to do fruit drinking yogurt, but they can fill only fruit pieces less than three mm. So you will tell the ingredients company, okay, I want for preparation strawberry, but the pieces size should be less than three mm. And I want it with artificial colors or nature identical colors or natural colors or natural flavors and use only modified starch as a stabilizer, don't use pectin. So you can define all these things. So this is how the ingredient industry works. So they can do tailor-made bespoke developments as per customer needs. Then in the ingredients industry, the open innovation has speeded up the concept to consumer. The, in, in the, in the year, years and years ago, the companies, they thought, okay, we should not tell this to anybody. We will develop this product in-house until and until we launch. Nobody should know about it. Only the consumer should see it first beside the people inside the company. But, but now there is a level of confidence between ingredient companies and the customers where they work together with protecting the secrecy without telling whatever being developed to anybody else. They do the product development. So this is called open innovation. The, the company, the customer will call and say, okay, we want to launch this product by this date and we want to finalize all the R&D by this date and we want to use these particular ingredients and this is our cost. So the ingredient company will work all around it and they will come up with what from uh, from their end what they should do and meet the customer, discuss the progress. So they will work together. So this is called open innovation. So the more the sharing, the better the outcome. So it is happening in food ingredients industry. Then next one, the market testing and low investments made possible. So if I, if I give an example in my current job, so we do beverage compounds. Say so if, if somebody wants to make an apple drink, 
we will give you everything in one blend the company the producer needs to have only citric acid sugar and water which they already have in their facility and they already have the bottles they already have the caps they just need a new label so we will give the apple juice flavors colors preservatives everything in one blend so they just need to pay for one blend from us as a new investment as a new raw material say if this was not there so they have to buy apple juice concern separately color separately flavor separately maybe stabilizer separately maybe not but if you buy apple juice concentrate you have to buy a container because it is frozen transported so there's a huge investment for 18 metric ton or 14 metric ton but when when we do it with our blend it's just a 500 kilo so you will spend only four thousand dollars to buy this raw material if you otherwise if you are to buy apple juice container it's going to cost you at least twenty two thousand thirty thousand dollars so with in, in the, because of the ingredient industry for the for the, for the companies they have been uh, able to do the market testing with new product launches at a very low, very lower uh, investment. Then again, when it comes to ingredient industry, of course, the Western world, they are leading with technology. So if you see most of the high-tech ingredients or most of the scientific ingredients like flavors, like gums or a tea, so many, so many high-tech ingredients that need high, high, advanced technology produced, they're mostly coming out of Western world. Or you can say it is coming from East Asia as well. China is also doing a good amount of ingredients to the world, yes. So this is a little bit about the food ingredient industry that I wanted to share with you. So the next, as university students, or even, even when you come out of the university, it is important how you get to know what is happening in ingredient industry, what new developments is happening. So the, the one way to do this, to, to get in, get to get this knowledge is to subscribe to newsletters. So there are number of websites circulating daily, weekly, monthly newsletters. And they are always sharing about the new developments in food ingredient industry or the rather food industry. I don't know how many of you are subscribed to Food Navigator or Food Dev. The Laughing Well is a site that lists out most of the information about flavors. If you go to Laughing Well, you will see who's the market leader in last year and who's leading this year, and the revenue of Fermanish and the revenue of uh, Simrise. All the all the uh, flavor houses in the world, almost all the houses. So, so there are opportunities today available for you to increase your knowledge about world world of food rather so let me move to my next of course one of the core of our of our session so recent trends in food ingredients it is not just recent it has been since the past the stay still is still the most preferred so the, whatever the problem, say you, whether we have diabetes or whatever the problem we have, if if it doesn't taste good, people will not buy it. So they will, of course, buy it first time, they will taste it. And if it, if it doesn't taste good, they will not repeat purchasing. So even today, the taste is, is still the preferred trend. So most of the new developers are coming they will always keep the taste in mind to develop products with acceptable taste yeah. then second one health and wellness is on increasing demand so we will in the later of our presentation we will discuss some uh, more in detail you know the, the people buy food because of two main reasons one is indulgence the other one is health and wellness because now the changes of the lifestyles have created more demand for health and wellness because of the obese population because of diabetes population because of the increasing 
and communicable diseases because of these things. It's a big, big talk of the town about health and wellness. And there are a lot of options for consumers to buy in terms of this direction. Then the next one, so there is a plant-based products are in increasing demand. So people call it plant forward options. So there are people, those who think animal welfare, so they will tend to buy plant-based products. And because of the fat content, some people don't want to consume meat because it is not good for their cholesterol profile. So therefore, there's a big demand for plant-based plants, plant products. Then the reduced sugar, it has been a discussion years and years and years about reduced sugar. So recently, if you have noticed there is a sugar tax imposed in, even in Sri Lanka, even in other countries, UK, and it is coming in Middle East, in different countries, sugar tax is coming. It's one of the reasons why they, the governments want to cut, out, cut down the sugar consumption because of the diabetes population in, in most of the countries. And of course, to some extent of the obesity. So they say it is a mostly spoken these days and also there are available reduced sugar options. So the mostly the stevia is a replacer or rather substitute for sugar, but because there's a limitation that people can use this stevia because of the taste. If you notice when the sugar tax was imposed in Sri Lanka, most of the car carbonated beverages in Sri Lanka were reformulated. And if you have tasted them, you will know what happened, how the taste was changed. Then the Sri Lankan government again revised the sugar tax. Then the companies again revised the recipes to come to an acceptable level. So the so reduction of sugar, there's a limit that you can do, of course. That is mainly for the added sugar. If you drink of 100% juice, which is really, really sweet enough, there's no problem. And then people call sugar is new tobacco, people call it sugar is white poison, and some people say sugar in crystallized form, you don't need it, because you get sugar from other food that you consume that is more than enough for your body. So because of these things, there's a, so it has been and is still the reduced sugar is a trend. And then now there's another trend. People want minimally processed food. People, people tend to prefer to buy minimally processed. People think, okay, it's more processed, no good, it's all, all the nutrients are destroyed. So there are certain perceptions of the consumers. So you will say coal peer company market, the cold pressed juice. So it gives a really very, very positive message to those who read this label, okay. This is cold pressed. What is it? And they, those who are in in the counters, they will say this is minimally processed. You know, it's good. It's much better than pasteurized or retorted drinks. So they say trend for minimally minimally processed, and of course clean label. So it has been over the decades and decades about clean label, but now the consumers are getting more educated and more educated because of the technology. They can see everything on their phone now. So they like to have a clean label because it is easy to understand in one way and always less complex. So when you product, when you look at a product, you see if it is sugar, mango juice and citric acid, it is of course very easy for you to understand. Of course it is not clean, I'm just giving an example. But if you say apple juice, sugar, santan gum, E125 and all these E numbers and that is a bit of complex to understand by everyone. So the clear label, it gives an indication this product is good for the health and less artificial. Then I'm sure you must have come to notice sustainability. So the, the we will talk a little bit more in, about sustainability in our later slides. But these days, if you read the annual reports of some companies, so there will be a page in the front for the sustainability. There are 17 sustainable goals called sustainable development goals. So all the companies want to show what they're doing to meet those goals. And sustainability is becoming a competitive advantage 
those who practice more sustainable they can uh, they tend to have a complete advantage in the market there is some people say sustainably sourced in their label okay then organic fair trade so the people don't want artificial fertilizers so people want more organic they think because it's good for the health and then the fair trade the fair trade is about community so people buy fair trade because they believe okay when we buy this somebody gets benefited so, and this is also in, in in trend now and then again you get the dairy alternatives so people have some people have lactose intolerance then uh, so they will shift to soy milk then uh, or in some countries people drink even coconut milk when i tried when i when i wanted to try the coconut milk first i thought i will not i'm not going to taste it but we developed some coconut milk beverage with cappuccino with coffee then when you drink it of course you can drink coconut milk so the so there are there is a trend for dairy alternatives. You will see even uh, frozen desserts. You will see even yogurt made out of plant like soya based or pea protein based, different uh, different plant protein based. And then of course, people tend to look for allergen free because some people are the lactose intolerant, some people are soya intolerant. So the, the option is coconut milk, one option of course. So they, so people want allergen free because in, in our country, say when, when some people eat wheat, so there's a small uh, issue in the stomach, little bit uncomfortability. But people think it's okay, that happens to me when I eat bread, but they don't recognize it is the gluten intolerance. But in some other countries, they will recognize it, okay, I'm, I'm intolerant to gluten, so I will not eat wheat based. So people want allergen free, so the uh, in uh, some products in some markets you will see no soya no dairy no nuts so allergen free this kind of uh, the things on the labels so these are some of the recent trends of course there could be more and more these are some trends that are being spoken a lot in the industry so let me uh, move to the next one so this is about the uh, some extracts from the web, of course. You must. Have, I personally have tasted Beyond Meat Burger in an exhibition. I I don't eat beef, but I don't eat beef, but I really really felt it was really meaty and even the taste. So the, in 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 the US, the the company called Dupont Nutrition is a big company in uh, nutrition and uh, ingredients industry for food. So they have done a research. So they have found more people are turning to plant-based options whenever available. And it's still, the, 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 the concern is, it's still they complain about the taste. They won't eat plant, but it's still, it would be much better if the taste was a bit more improved. So taste was, has been a barrier for the shift, but it's still some people shift for other reasons. And it is also said that people like to see the plant-based on the labels other than vegetarian or vegan. Because when, when it says plant-based, it gives a very direct message saying, okay, this is from the plants. Other than vegetarian and vegan, those who know the terms, of course, they are very, they are okay. Otherwise, it does not give the direct message of what this is made out of. But the, when you say plant-based, it, it completely says it is plant-based. So this is a web extract I took to share with you guys. Then let's go to future perspectives in food ingredients. So let's let's try to understand what drives the future perspectives. So if you look at the generations, we are now, you know, everybody's talking about generations. We are passing from generation to generation to generation. So we are coming from baby boomer to generation X to then we were talking about millennials, then we're talking about generation S, now we're talking about generation alpha. So we are, we're talking about the uh, children of generation Y. And if you notice, 
because we are we are passing to two generations so now we see this uh, we have seen we have seen the generation x we have been in generation y and we are seeing generation z and we are seeing generation y so we personally can see what has changed when i was in the university we didn't have many people with the big stomachs <laughs> and i don't know how it is today when i see the children on the roadside those who are waiting for the bus to go to school i see a very good visible stomach in them when when we had a obese or obese or a, a, a friend with a little bit tummy and he will be humiliated like nothing saying that oh he'll give a different different names but today it cannot be done because everybody is same in a classroom everybody has stomachs so there's a lifestyle change because technology has been very different today so you can get everything done while sitting you don't need to go anywhere and most of the vehicles are available most of the families have vehicles so they will always go by vehicle the walking has been very much reduced then uh, food habits there were no so much of uh, fast food restaurants or the places selling fried rice 15 uh, 15 years ago but now there are huge number of shops and again huge number of people every day waiting to buy so food habits have completely been changed in the past it was homemade meal wrapped taken to the office or to the school eaten as lunch now it's not the case always so the lifestyle has changed the physical activity level has changed so we have been walking and walking without buses uh, we, there are no buses so we have to walk but now everywhere you get you get taxi you get buses have you will find a way to will find a way not to walk then food habits have been changed and of course the things available today on the shelves the development of the supermarkets things have come very close to your home so you see many things so your food habits have automatically changed eating in a qsr drinking fruit juices all these coffee shops eating cakes all these things and then it accessibility so the generation today they are very much it savvy compared to the generation x those who started using the baby boomers those who started using computers then generation x got somewhat used to computers and the millennials they know they know some stuff generation i said they know everything about it most of them so they all they they all everybody is on the social media they are tweeting they are facebooking and chatting whatsapp so all these it accessible somebody is a cheesecake today in one uh, shop in two minutes somebody else his old friends see okay this my friend is eating cheesecake in this place and it tastes really good okay we should all go there so they say because of the it accessibility so you, your lifestyle your eating habits have changed from generation to generation again the within the social media so many things you see on uh, social media social media marketing you know when you have a gathering of friends then uh, whatever you eat you will post on you will post on uh, facebook or you will post on uh, twitter or on instagram you want to share with others so the so the new generations again are more experimental so they want to try new things and they like new things they want to try new things when they see they like new things and they are very much tech savvy and they prefer social movements they want to go out and have with friends in a cafe so you will you will see how the different generations have adapted different lifestyle 
and different have rather different uh, preferences how it has been uh, shifting from generation to generation so keeping this in mind let's move to the next one so what i was saying again so did you notice obeshal in your class or in your village and the question is how many obes were 20 years ago and how many are now and bmi body man index in your colleagues in your school and university do you see this out of the track and uh, then do you see what medicines your grandparents are regularly taking are there a lot of the number of pills are they taking then again coming back to change in lifestyle so we have now because of the people who people like things so there are working families now most of the families both husband and wife work so we have coconut scrapers we don't don't know we are pushed to buy a coconut scraper other than scraping coconut by ourselves manually then you will also see in the supermarkets frozen ready to cook foods in supermarkets and you will also see some ready to eat can easily get a hot dog in kills easily and are you when you go nearby a kfc mcdonalds or any 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 fast food are you tempted to eat do you think oh this is no good this is the, we should not eat it or oh, let's go and try this at least have an ice cream is that what your mind says then the next one again daily activity level so if you want to buy some food we used to walk and buy or now do you buy online or some applications so ha ha have you noticed this kind of uh, things in your society and have you given a thought about it and have you ever compared it how it has been in the history okay now the point as a result if you see cancer diabetes chronic respiratory diseases in addition to cardiovascular diseases account for 82% of the global ncd deaths so more people are dying from cancer diabetes and chronic respiratory diseases and why because of four main shared factors tobacco physical activity diet and alcohol okay so some people are addicted to tobacco some people are addicted to alcohol and not everybody is drinking alcohol not everybody is taking tobacco but physical activity inactivity and the diet these two are common for each and every living being especially humans when it come to so the two major factors contributing to these ncds so the it is it has become a challenge to the world to the companies to the humans to the society to find solutions because there are a lot of this happening there are a lot of ncds happening so and it is only increasing so there is there's a big challenge to find solutions so let's keep that in mind let's move to the next one it's about diabetes in the worldwide if you see in north america and caribbean by 2045 they are that they expecting it to increase by 33% and if you look at everywhere it is only an increase is been noticed predicted there's no decrease so it's going to be more diabetic population in the world which is of course no good and which is of course why we should find a solution in sri lanka if you see the amount of money government is spending for giving medicines for these diabetic people it's a country that giving free health so if our country were healthy so government would have saved them money regardless of where it goes to after saving 
So the one more aspect, the world is getting older. So in the world, the aged population, 60 plus, is going to be more by 2050. That means, so there is a aged population growing. So there will be a demand, increase in demand for the aged population. If you see the, uh, the, the population between 15 to 59, it's almost like the same. And you will see the children population is uh, shrinking by 2050. So the, now we are at, say it has been only 12.3% 12, 12 increase in 2015, and it's going to be 21.3 in 2050. So we'll have a almost 9% increase in age population. So you will see some countries, of course, because it's a global aspect, but if you take like a country like Bangladesh, you, even if you take today, you will see more than 50% of the population less than 25 years age. And uh, so their family sizes are bigger. So the, in, if you take an individual country, the aging population may be shrinking, but if you take the whole world, it is getting thicker and thicker. Now, future perspectives. So now we have we understood some community problems. So those problems drive future perspectives. So sustainability, again, I'm coming to that point, is key. Why sustainability? Because world is suffering. We have environmental problems. We have resources scarce. We have limited amount of water. So if we don't think about sustainability, at least now, and we are going to suffer very badly in the future. So for any business to operate, sustainability is very, very important. So when you, so sustainably source raw materials, less energy consumption, okay. So less uh, ingredient source from uh, zero impact or other positive carbon impact to the environment, those will be a very big concern for the future. And then it is again a part of social responsibility, the sustainability. Socially responsible companies can tell stories. This is what we are doing to the community. So people will like to hear those kind of stories and the consumers will like to buy from these kind of companies. So if you are a company manufacturing ingredients and say, okay, we are manufacturing it in South Africa and we are recruiting families from less income people and employing women, empowering women, and we are giving a daycare facility so the women can come, mothers can come and keep their children in the workplace in the daycare and then work so they can see their children while they're working. So this kind of stories, so socially responsible companies in practice. So the, they will tell stories. So they will, uh, they will have a uh, much positive impact in, 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 the, in the industry. So if you are a company manufacturing food ingredients, if you are having this kind of a story behind you, so it's going to help you. Say like, you know that cocoa, cocoa bean industry is a very dirty industry in some cases because of child labor. So most of the cocoa plantations, they have to ensure, they have to give a certificate that can be acceptable, saying that they have not used child labor. So if you are manufacturing cocoa or a cocoa powder and if you're using child labor, so you are not, you're not recognized as a good company. Yeah. Then health and wellness will continue because of the, the problems that we discussed before, diabetes, NCDs, there will be more and more demand for health and wellness and the aging population is growing. So they need more healthy foods. They want functional foods. So this health and wellness focus will continue to rise. 
then the organic demand the people are willing they are looking for more natural things so they would want artificially fertilized things to buy so if they have organic drinks they will rather buy organic drink rather than by buying an organic drink so i remember in in uh, in an exhibition in europe so we were we were showing organic drinks so everybody is coming and asking asking about only organic drinks and that part of the world where the per capita income is high of course who who has more affordability for some for some uh, spending level so they are asking uh, only organic drinks and if you say that it has uh, if if it doesn't have organic label so they will not they will not even look at it then again taste trends it will remain most influential whatever it is people will still want to have an acceptable taste and uh, having said that there will be more demand for natural flavors so if you can give uh, more and more natural so people will like to consume that natural taste rather than taste from an artificial ingredient then salt and sugar reduction will continue but we will we're not going to solve this uh, problem of uh, diabetes by 2050 for sure by 2050 it will only increase so at least until we solve diabetes problem to at an acceptable level this will always rise and the blood pressure so how many people have blood pressure today so salt reduction will always be a concern until and unless we have this blood pressure patient reduced to an acceptable level then again so regarding flavors so we had artificial flavors natural indical flavors natural flavors and now we are talking about ftnf from the name of the fruit so what does it really mean so now in uh, if you see in sri lanka in nectar nobody in in, in legally nature identical or artificial flavors cannot be used or artificial colors cannot be used only natural colors and natural flavors and uh, if you go to europe there are no so called artificial or nature identical flavors they call it flavoring substances if you have natural flavors you can say natural flavors otherwise you will say flavoring substances then ftnf flavors is is more and more pure if you say now if you want to make a natural orange flavor so you can get uh, citrus component from different different uh, fruits but if you say uh, orange ftnf you can get aromatics only from orange so that's what you call ftnf then plant based you know animal welfare and because of the health aspects of meat products the plant based products will more and more come to the market people will develop plant based you know of course it is already available you can see plant based burgers you can uh, you can see plant based sausages and you will only see it is, it is becoming more and more popular and available in uh, in places consumers to buy and then healthy snacking and convenience so people you know they eat of course they like snacks So if you have snacks that are healthy there'll be more demand for that and people are talking about protein bars and then uh, fruit and cereal bars so they, are, they 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 don't have anything just fruit and cereal mixed and formed into a bar because with the technology so it's it's more healthy snacking and uh, other than a uh, fruit drink sometimes people will like to buy a yogurt drink which is good for your gut if it is probiotic And, uh, so people will look at this kind of uh, natural and healthy snacking and then coca water is of course becoming more and more popular day by day because of the potassium content it has so some people say it is the isotonic drink the best isotonic drink found naturally so the coca water gives more potassium and it is becoming very very much in uh, especially europe countries and sri lanka is one of the uh, countries exporting coca water in uh, small uh, retail tetra packs as well as in bulk and as a best country 
that we only have only Sri Lanka has king conger water that can source in commercial scale. So Sri Lanka exports king conger water as well in bulk as well as in retail packs. So they and we only see the demands are growing. Even our company, we have a lot of inquiries for coconut water or king conger water based products. Then. Then every country the globally, the food service segment is growing. See, uh, the cafe shop, cafes, coffee shops, everywhere is growing. So there will be a demand for the more and more requirements in uh, food service segment, hotels, restaurant, caterings for ingredients. So for instance, organic waste is a big problem. So if, if there is a juice bar who is operating in a very small space, they want to keep a fridge and they want to keep a table to do the processing and if they have organic waste coming and if they're in the city they cannot dispose there will be smell in the shop but there are products made out of like mango pieces and in juice and packed in bottles so those kind of things it makes their life easy so they can just buy it put it to the glass or put it to the blender, put some ice and then mix it and serve. So there will be more and more. And also the because of the cafes are coming up. So people want this uh, chocolate lava cake or the cheesecake. So the ingredient premixes for making cheesecake, these kind of things. Because you cannot, an experience or a com competent chef is expensive. But when you have ingredients, the ingredient blends, you don't need any, you don't need a, competent, also experienced chef. You don't want to pay for it, for such a person. Just get the ingredient, they do the job, just basic mixing that anybody can learn within a few hours. So there will be a, a growing demand for ingredients in a food service segment. So in, 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 and in some countries, the cannabis for recreational purposes have been legalized fully. So one country is Canada. So the so there are different forms of uh, cannabis that can consume when you when when someone goes to those countries like you can either take it a drink or sometimes you can eat it or maybe it comes in a salad dough mixed or something like that so they so they the cannabis based drinks is in uh, the companies what they say is only increasing demand so people are more and more asking for cannabis based drinks was one because of the, the the mental hype it gives it is again a, a demand from one age group or maybe culture aspects as well then the next one the sustainable water you know the earth has limited amount of water the water is finite it is not infinite so if the water is not managed properly it's going to be a big big problem so the coconut flower water there's a new concept so we are expecting it to be asked by companies in the future. So we get the coconut sap, like we call in single telige. So we remove the solids of the telige. Then we take the water. And that water can be used in place of normal water to make drinks. So that is, of course, expensive compared to using normal water. But when it comes to sustainability, the company who are really focused on sustainability, who wants to tell stories, they will buy it. And we are talking about this with some companies for developing some beverages. And this water, when a coconut plant grows, they absorb more carbon than, they, than the company consumes to convert them into coconut flower water. So the net carbon contribution is positive to the, to the environment. Therefore, this is the... Uh, this is the currently found, except normal water, the sustainable water source. So we are working on uh, this aspect as well. So these are some of the future aspect, uh, the perspectives in food ingredients industry. Of course, that 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 are that are driven by the consumer needs and the problems of the consumers, rather, and the new experiences that consumers prefer. So if you move to the next one, this is one example uh, of organic shots. So this is 60 milliliter bottle, organic. It has only fruit and vegetable extracts. 
It is a natural immune booster. So you get all the benefits of turmeric or ginger or the green tea, much is a type of green tea. It's packed in a small bottle. So this is a bit it's strong to drink, but that's what it is. That's why it is a small portion, 60 ml, because of the functions from ginger or the chili. So it gives you a little bit of a kick if you are feeling lethargy. But it's a very, uh, very natural way and it's only good for the body. So, and this is also becoming uh, highly demanded in the uh, Western world. So this one of, one of these bottles will cost around uh, 60 ml, around $2.5 per bottle on the shelf in a retail. It's expensive, but it's a good, so good stuff. And this is manufactured by us. The, the current company I work. Then, again, when it comes to ingredient industry, like I said, those who can give a new experience, those who can tell a story, they will have future perspective. So this is our ice cream, Orana. So what we do is we make exotic flavors, fruits available in Denmark. So you can go to YouTube link where I share the presentation and see. So the, we have two ice cream shops in uh, Denmark and uh, one in Vietnam. So we make ice cream like jackfruit, then uh, dragon fruit, durian, different types of the jackfruit you will not find it in Europe. It is coming all the way from Asia, there are East Asia. Durian also same. So we're making them available. So when the consumers eat it, it's a very new experience for them. And in one uh, one corn, you will get one scoop of dragon fruit, one scoop of elderflower, one group of then passion fruit or different kind of things. So it's a very, very joyful moment. So telling a story. So it's all natural. So if so the ingredient industry as an ingredient company. So we should think along the same way. So if there's an ice cream shop, so we should help with our ingredients for them to offer some authenticity to tell a good story. So if an ingredient company, those who can do this kind of things, they will have a really, really good future demand in the, in the, in the market. So when it comes to sustainability, I think I'll, We'll not talk more detail in about, in, in, uh, about sustainability, but what I wanted to ask, so we had Millennium Development Goals, which was which is going to be ended in this year, but then uh, we started the SDGs in 2015 with the targets to achieve in 2030. So you know, you all know why sustainability, because what is happening today is not good for, for all, if it continues. So because of the things happening in the environment or the the world, the poor or the less privileged people are going to be mostly affected. It's not the rich people or the developed countries. So the sustainability is very important because if less privileged people get more impact, it will be really difficult for them. So the, the companies or the economies, those who can support, they will they will, uh, they will try to, to do their best in, in different aspects. So if they can uh, open factories in uh, less developed countries, they can uh, help elevate poverty. And of course, some companies, they can help for some people to have education. And then gender equality. So if you see that most of the companies now, you will see most of the female people, they are getting in higher positions. People, it was not there, but it is becoming more and more visible now. And a lot of the, when you are starting a company, then uh, you're putting all these sustainability aspects to reduce the energy consumption, reduce emission levels, because you want to do good for the society, to do good for the environment, which is why the sustainability is. And of course it is, important globally because it's not going whatever we do is not going to affect only us it's going to affect somebody else as well so we should be very concerned about what we're doing then who is affected the most it is actually if you see 
Where is the most water polluted and where do you see most plastic is thrown? Where is plastic, plastic is not recycled? And is Europe using more plastic or are they using glass? So it's those who are living in less developed countries, they are going to affect the most. Then the other question, who developed pet and who's using it the most? So who caused this environment problem? That's also something to think. So however, with all these aspects, sustainability is becoming a big, big, big topic. It will remain until 2030, a big topic. So the next one I want to show, the, some of the things I want to share that I've seen in uh, different markets. So because of the ingredients in UAE, you will see the chicken breast with 30 to 40 percent brine injected in it. So if you buy one kilo of chicken breast, you will get either 600 or 700 grams of meat plus 300 or 400 grams of water in it. So you're really paying for water. That's because of the ingredients. So there are brine systems developed with uh, hydrocolloids like sands and locus bean, cognac gum combinations, phosphates. So because of them, the industries can inject brine and it will not come out even if you leave, leave uh, in the fridge. No need to be frozen. And then frankfurters, the chicken sausages are all made of MDM MRM. MDM MRM called the meat slurry, the mechanically deborn meat or mechanically recovered meat. So there are ingredients developed. You can use this meat slurry, but you can still get an acceptable texture. So people develop frankfurters using this crappy meat. So you will see a lot of in uh, UAE. It's a market that I have worked, so I, I've seen this. Now you go to Pakistan. So in, in, in Sri Lanka, of course, we consume a lot of curd and a lot of plain set yogurt, but as a desert. But in Pakistan, you go, the most of the yogurt is considered as culinary. So they have this biryani. So they will eat curd with uh, biryani. Then you go to Bangladesh, you will, you will see the fruit drinks, five to 10% fruit content, five to 10% fruit content is nothing in a, it's no fruit almost. In Sri Lanka, if you say we don't have much fruit drinks, but we are more of a nectar market, which is 25 to 50% uh, fruit. Which is more, more fruit in it. But if you go to Bangladesh, you will get a whole lot of stabilizers in it. You feel like you're drinking a gum, very bright yellow. So that is a very, very low quality for drinks there. So bricks 14 to 16 is very sweet. So you will, you now know why they have a lot of diabetes. If you go to India, you will see white car sausages cooked in hot water. So when I was doing one trials, I wanted to do, cook the sausage and they showed me the water bath. Then I cooked in the water bath. Then my sausage doesn't have any taste. Then I went and tasted the water in it. The water I have put, no sugar, sorry, no salt. But the water they had has sugar. So I had to put salt in the water to make sure the sausage has the right salt balance. So something I learned from there. And then in uh, you go to Vietnam, you will see tea drinks. What they do is they take a tea drink in the RTD bottle, they pour it to a big glass and then put a whole lot of ice and they drink it for 15, 20 minutes, they drink. So that's one of the lifestyle they have. So for the ingredients for tea drinks, the beverage compounds, we have a really, really good, good duty plan in, uh, in Vietnam. Then you go to Europe, if you see this uh, mortadella like sausages, you will see the sausage with a large caliber. And then you see white spots in some places called mosaic fat. But it's not 100% uh, pork fat always. Now, because of the meat proteins, you can make highly functional emulsions like one part of protein can bind 10 parts of water. So rather 15 parts of water and 10 parts of fat. So you chop it and make it an emulsion, you allow it to set. So it becomes a gel. Then you can cut into pieces and use it as a fat substitute. And this one, uh, is cheaper than using pork fat and it has been made possible because of the ingredients technology. So I was using in a, in a project with a pork and beef protein. This is something I saw and I, I learned myself. Then 
the another thing I was thinking always the orange has more vitamin C but then got to know the tropical guava has more vitamin C than orange that I got to know from my current job so next I would like to talk a little bit about future prospects for food technologists so of course why, if I talk about in Sri Lankan context, there are a lot of opportunities for entrepreneurship. If you want to become an entrepreneur, the, you, the knowledge you have is really, really good enough. So if you see most of the entrepreneurs in Sri Lanka, those who make chutneys or those who make any food product, basic product, they are not graduates. They didn't have this knowledge, but they did it because they did. either they didn't have anything else to do, only way out of life was to start something or, or they wanted to do it. So the as pack of knowledge in food science and technology, there are a good number of entrepreneurship opportunities. And then if you want funds, there are a lot of government supported funds as well. Then of course, NPD, QA, QC, as always, there will be a good demand for the, the, the same demand will continue. And I think uh, because of the uh, things happening in the market, there will be more opportunities to do good product developments. And there are the certifications, the quality is becoming more and more important. The people want more tra transparency. So the certifications there are new certifications coming. So we had ISO when I was in the university, we had uh, 22,000. Then now we are talking about FSSC 22,000. And uh, halal, kosher, all these things are becoming more and more material. So there will be, always be jobs in uh, quality assurance aspects uh, in terms of certifications, as well as the, the production uh, factories the maintaining quality of raw materials and product will always be a prime focus. So the, uh, especially when you are in, in a university, if you get the knowledge or if you do a project or if you do a research that has more commercial benefit, and that means you can go and talk to a company and you have done something, this is your study, this is the problem my raw materials uh, solve, or this is the benefit my product gives. And if you, this is the, the, the people are so much of diabetes and the people have is cholesterol. And if they, my product can help them at least to give a little benefit. So the, the knowledge in these kind of aspects will have more and more demand. And if you have something, you can, of course, talk a lot to many companies about it when you, when you get the opportunity. And uh, like I said, uh, for variation, various certification areas. So uh, we know that uh, now because, you know, the people buy from different, different places. So Sri Lanka buys from China. Sometimes they have not seen the supplier. And sometimes the sample comes okay, the commercial shipment is not okay. So I have seen some people, their job is to verify the supplier. So they go audit the supplier and give the guarantee. Okay. Yes, you are good to work with the supplier. So supplier verification is becoming a new job area. Previously, it was part of some company, some company were not concerned about it because it's a cost, but now it's becoming a concern for companies. Then. So I, what I have seen in uh, Sri Lanka, of course, there are limited opportunities as well as the more students, they think about QA, they want to be in the production, they want to do in R&D, or they want to go in more technical related roles. But there are good opportunity to come into commercial roles. So if you go on LinkedIn and if you search food technology jobs, you'll get a lot of you know, key account manager, business manager, technical sales manager. So when you work in uh, technical commercial roles, it is really, really a good uh, blend. I mean, you know about the food and 
if you know who else is better than you to sell. So that technical knowledge is very, very helpful. In, in Europe, most of the, I mean, it has been since long ago. It has always been a food technology education that, that is in demand to come into a food ingredient cell. But in Sri Lanka, it has not been the same case. But now it is becoming the case because if you go to sell something, if you don't know what function it does and if you don't know how it can help the customer and how customers should use it, if you can't answer those questions, today, no business, no sales. So the people, those who have right knowledge will have more demand. And again, so now because of the technology, the international recruitment, there are a good number of opportunities to go beyond Sri Lanka. Of course, you know, there are a lot of students going to South Middle East for quality assurance jobs. But at the same time, there are in, in, in many countries, if you see on uh, LinkedIn, you will see a lot of opportunities. It does not mean that you got I me. Mean, I'm not saying that you will get it as soon as you apply, but there are opportunities that you can try to reach. I mean, try to apply for. So these are some of the future aspects, prospects rather, for students, those who have studied food technology. So if I move to next, and uh, so talking about Sri Lanka as a, as a product of free education. So what I would like to share, so what I, what I think that is important to consider when you are in the university or when you are coming out of the university. So we, we do projects. Sometimes we go to a company, okay, we want to go to a big company and try to get a job soon after the, soon after degree finishes. And uh, we try to go into a company, okay, try to do a new ice cream, try to do a new beverage. And by, it's, it's, there's no real, real uh, research or real, real project there. Because if they have orange flavor, if they want to do apple flavor, why they need a technologist to do it? They can easily do it. I'm just uh, saying a basic, but if you do a project, just always think about a good commercial value that can help a company to gain a good commercial benefit or that can give a good market, like either they can sell to a good uh, number of consumers or it can help reduce the cost. So the improving quality is also aspect, but they all, always have the quality assurance team. They're always trying to do it. So they think in a different way, like, okay, if you do this and you're going to save this much of money, if you do, if you apply my project, you are going to get this much of money. So think along those aspects. It is very, very important because your project or your research should come out of the library. It should not stay inside the library. So think along these lines when you are get ready to getting out, when you, when you are getting ready to come out of the university, even when you do the uh, mini projects, try to do something new that your next generations will talk about something value for someone. Okay. Then the next one, you know, we all, of course, a lot of students try to go for big companies. Like I said, they want to get a job. Of course, with our economy, as it is a prime concern. At the same time, there are small, small companies who have started exporting goods out of Sri Lanka, but they don't have the knowledge that you have, but they're doing it. They're, they're bringing dollars to the company. So if you can speak to someone, if you can work with someone like that to help to increase their product that they're exporting. So that is really, really a good contribution as a food technologist to the industry. If you work in some companies, you will learn what that company is doing and how that company is making drinks, how that company is making ice cream, how that company is making yogurt. So you will come out of with that knowledge. And then you go to an interview and if you say, okay, I, I have seen how it is made. You can never say, I know how it is made. You can always say how I have seen 
drink production, yogurt production, blah, 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 in, in commercial scale. But you work with a small company, you can say, okay, we together developed this product and we exported this product. So there's again a story, real, real value. And then again, when you look at a project, like I said, some people go because they want to get a job in the company, but some people do a project because they want to get that experience, they want to get the knowledge. So always uh, focus on a project that you can get a good experience, a new experience. That will have a value. Maybe you will not get a job in the same company, but they will have real, real good value because nobody stays unemployed forever. Some people get a job in one month, some people get a job in two months, some people get a job in six months. You will not be unemployed. And uh, I was explaining about opportunities beyond the border. I always think about try to get that experience if possible going out of the country it is really 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 good when you go out and work in a different culture in a different different company different country with a different set of people for different market that will give you a very very good and uh, that's again something that you can uh, always keep in your mind Again, try to think along the lines to add raw mat add value to the raw materials that are utilized in Sri Lanka. Say, for instance, we had a, uh, I say we have a pro we have a product developed with uh, this Kessel butter, a jam in, in our university. But it has never come to the commercial. Uh, it has never gone to the consumer. But it was really a value addition. And then uh, we have Varaka cordial. It has also not come to the commercial uh, market. But if you go uh, to Thailand, close to airport, you will get waraka, jackfruit, nicely packed, nicely packed, and they're selling for dollars. Excuse me. That's, uh, that's again, uh, in Sri Lanka, we have Varaka just going out and nobody is doing anything. So just try to think along something because there's always a market there. It's export development board you can go and talk to them, get the information if they have demand, if they have got any inquiries. So you can think about projects on, along those, those lines as well. Then, The, what, what I was explaining before, the entrepreneurs who make jams, chutneys, they did not have a degree, then uh, what they have then, they have the courage. They took the risk. And when we have the knowledge, why don't we have the courage? Why don't we take the risk? I know that everybody cannot be an entrepreneur, but just keep these things in your mind that someday, it will drive your mind to action. Then, today, if you come out, competition is very high and the knowledge is more and more compared to 10 years ago. So prepare yourself, learn more and more. And when, when you are when you are, when you have the opportunity, when you're in the university. So try to meet people, try to go to conferences, try to read the research papers, try to read the newsletters. So learn more and more. And uh, so the more you know, so it's always beneficial for you. And then next, so we are a country consuming milk powder. We are so used to drink milk powder. But the question is, those who produce milk powder, do they really drink milk powder or they drink milk, fresh milk and they dry the excess and sell it to other countries? So as a food technologist, so how, 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 you, how you think, how you see these kind of things in terms of, uh, I mean, along the thinking of a country economy. So, so what, what what we should really do 
So as a food tech, what should we encourage? So as food techers, we of course have responsibility, moral responsibility to uplift the food industry in Sri Lanka. So when you do that, you uplift the, the, the lives of some people. So if you develop a product or if you do some product, try to do with fresh milk other than using milk powders. And again, I want to emphasize, so when you are in technical studies, but still try to get these commercial things into your mind because the, the, the technical plus commercial value combination has more demand and you can do things very differently other than when you have only technical knowledge. So when you say, for instance, you go and do a project. So in the end of the project, you have a financial analysis like, okay, you're showing this is the cost of the product and this is how the supply chain is and this is how easy to produce it. And this is the projected financial revenue, something like that. I know maybe it's too big for the undergraduates, but or the rather soon graduates, but think along those lines because it creates only a good value. It is never, it is never detrimental. So try to build these uh, commercial things into your technical knowledge and try to work along, especially when you come out of and you go to a company, everything we do must have commercial sense. So the more you contribute commercially to a company, the more, more value you have, the more respect you earn. So sometimes, you know, you're doing um, quality testing every day, every day, every day, every day, you just become a normal person. And uh, next day, if you say I'm leaving, nobody will bother. So they can get anybody to do whatever, you, whatever, whatever you've been doing. But if you have been uh, very contributing, you have this, uh, the ap approach of you is very contributing this, that will have more demand. So, this is something I wanted to share with you so to, to give something to, to your mind to think about. So we have come to the conclusion. So this is all I have prepared to share with you so far. I hope I have given you, I have been able to give you some insights and um, share some of my experience. So if you have any question, if you would like to know some more details about anything, I would be really, really happy to receive your questions. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, even though the time is limited, our viewers have pointed out several doubts and questions about the food ingredient technology. Yes, uh, I would like to present them, expecting brief answers. Yeah. Uh, Sir, could I please ask them now? Yes, please. Uh, then first one is, what are the potentials and drawbacks of the food ingredient industry in Sri Lanka today? Yeah, well, in, in terms of... Uh, Compared uh, to other countries. Yeah. So the, well, the, the major drawback in Sri Lanka in food ingredient industry is the uh, technology and the opportunities are very, very less to be an ingredient technologist compared to in another country. Because if you are in Europe, if you want to get any raw material, most of the ingredients you can get very easily from uh, surrounding countries. It will come within two days. But when you are an island and if you are far away, sometimes that comfortability will not be there. In, in in the industry and the uh, another the, the 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 second thing in ingredients the the commercial aspects if you want to get some of the ingredients you will have a more queues so even if you really want to use it in it will not be commercially sensible but if you are in uh, Denmark and if your product is in Germany you can easily get it it's just a ground transport and you can do it so those are the major drawbacks and the advantages is advantages are rather because there are no good ingredient blending houses it is not it is not a mature market in here so there are very very good opportunities to 
be an ingredient technologist and do some of your own blends and uh, promote it to the market. It's not so difficult about learning ingredients. It's, it's always about doing and doing and again and again and making sure it works. The good thing is you can still get ingredients even if it takes long time. You can still get ingredients in Sri Lanka. And uh, other one is in Sri Lanka, we of course have some very unique ingredients. Say for instance, the real cinnamon oil or the best black pepper oil resin, they are all in Sri Lanka. So you can always think of something to do with this kind of very unique things and look at export aspects. If you take today, the, the Indian companies, they are buying pepper from Sri Lanka because of the pepper in content. So other than selling just pepper, why don't we look at uh, to export them in another format? So th those are some of the uh, answers I have for your question. I hope is, is that does that answer your question? Uh, yeah, answer is clear. And there is another question, sir. Mm -hmm. uh, what is the legal background of this industry in our country and other countries? Well, uh, well, in terms of legal, so the food food ingredients are in in most of the countries. It is, of course, uh, I don't see any illegal effect. Of course, if, if you look at some of the like cannabis or like things, there will be legal aspects. But if you use, if you think about the common ones, some ingredients are allowed in other uh, countries, some ingredients are not allowed. Say, for instance, if you want to use uh, santan gum in nectar, it is not possible in Sri Lanka. But if you go to do it in uh, Bangladesh, it is okay, no problem. And uh, Again, uh, say if you want to put beef fraud into chicken sausage, it is not possible in Sri Lanka. And uh, But it is not a problem in Europe. You can mix pork and beef and anything, you can make a sausage. And uh, most of the uh, those kind of things apart, but other aspects in terms of illegal, I don't see because the, the Codex and the Jack for the WHO or the WFO rather. So they're all involved in uh, making this uh, food indigenous grass. So we will, the, the Sri Lankan legal system or the regulatory, they are also more aligned with this uh, Codex and uh, JECFAR. So I don't see any many, many illegal aspects, except some regulatory aspects. Of course, cannabis, like if you talk, yes, it is illegal in Sri Lanka. It is, completely legal in Canada. And uh, yeah, you can say most of the regulatory constraints, constraints are there rather not legal aspects. Mm, okay, so and uh, there is another question. Uh -huh. uh, what are the extra qualifications we should acquire to occupy in this field? Uh, can you come again, please? There was a loss of the voice. Hello? Um, what are the extra qualifications we should acquire to occupy in this field? Yeah, it's like, uh, if you want to be in uh, food ingredients industry, I mean, specifically in food ingredients. So it is very important to know the functionality of your ingredient and how it works in the end product and how the end product is manufactured by the companies. Say for if I put into a context, so if you have, I'll take a basic example. If you, if you want to do culture, if you want to sell culture, you should know at what temperature the culture should be added to the pasteurized milk to make yogurt. So if you don't know that, you cannot sell. So that, that comes to the knowledge of what you have learned. So if you go in more deeper, say if you want to develop a, like a uh, stabilizer for sausages, like uh, to reduce the water loss upon cooking. 
So you want to know how your ingredients work. Say for instance, you are using a modified starch that gets gelatinized upon cooking. So you know how your ingredient works. At the same time, you need to know the processing aspects of the sausage and what temperature they cook up to 80 degrees, up to 85 degrees. Then at 85 degrees, does your starch get completely gelatinized? So this is the complete understanding you need to be in the ingredients industry. Plus the, the cost aspects when you, when they put your product, when they stop 10% water loss and using your ingredient, do they get a benefit, commercial benefit, or do they increase their, do they meet the expectation of quality? So the, 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 the knowledge you need is the, of course, R and D knowledge is very important. So that comes when you do and do and do. That's what I was saying. Most of the ingredient companies, they have the application lab. So when you work in a real ingredient company, you will get to know how a sausage is made commercially. You will get to know how a yogurt is made commercially because there is an application lab. So you are more prepared to go to the customer to talk about the ingredient and how it is used. So in terms of uh, the skills that you want to acquire, so you how the product is made, the functionality, those are the things you basically need. And of course, your understanding about the behavior of your ingredients and different temperatures and different processing conditions. All those things come when you do small, small scale, scale lab trials. And that comes with the experience, certain things. But for you to get started with, of course, you are, the knowledge you have is more than enough. If you get into the right setup, where you can do the lab scale trials and the pilot scale trials. Yep. Um, okay, so, uh, and uh, there is another question. Uh, how identify, how can we identify the good quality ingredient, uh, the parameters like this? Okay, so it, uh, of course, it, the come on, come again. What are the parameters? In yeah. Right. How can we ident identify the good quality ingredients? Uh, yeah. The parameters? Yeah, so it, it depends on uh, which ingredient to ingredient, of course. And it's all about what functionality and how far it solves your problem and at what cost level or at what cost saving level. So if you want to know the functionality or the, the good ingredients, the best way is to use in your end product and repeat the trials four or five times to make sure that the results are repeated in the same way, same positive way. And then you calculate the cost benefit or the cost of it. And then you will see, okay, I really have a benefit and the ingredient is functional. So this is how you select the good uh, ingredients. So if you want to compare ingredients, say for instance, you get uh, you want to get um, starch for some application. So you will get two, three samples. So what you do is you will, you will apply all these three products in the same process that you want to do commercially. Okay. So which gives the best result and assuming all three starches have same prices and which gives the best result is your best ingredient. So it's, the ingredient can be very functional alone. If you test, say for instance, um, if you take, if you want to test the gelling of a starch, you take the starch and then you heat it in and uh, check the delta temperature and then the structure. Maybe one starch is really, really good, but you use them in a sausage, but the best starch alone is not the best starch in the end product. So that is why it is very, very important. You try individually, of course, to compare, but again, try in the end product application to select the, the good one. And the plus cost aspect is also a concern. Does that answer your question? Mm -hmm. uh, yes, uh, thank you. Uh, and uh, another question, yeah. uh, as undergraduates, can't we join with new innovations of ingredient industry? Well, this is okay. So this comes to the very first question you asked. 
So this is one drawback in Sri Lanka. So you know in uh, in Sri Lanka I would say opportunities are very very less. Yeah. I don't say zero, but it is very very less but nene if you were in uh, somewhere else there would have been better internships as an undergraduate to go and work in uh, well well known companies. But in Sri Lanka I don't know which company you will go because there are no such uh, ingredient companies that you can go as an undergraduate but as an undergraduate there is something you can do of course you can always speak to the students those who graduated from the university ask them to give you samples and try out in the lab in the university when you don't have a company that's something you can do inside the university and if you want to understand how the different phosphates work and if you want to develop like synergistic hydrocolloid blends like santan cognac or so those kind of things you can do it on your own and even if you want to understand the functionality of sausage the, the phosphates in a sausage is something you can do in a in the inside the university lab so in sri lanka the, the as a company opportunity will be limited as an undergraduate but of course being in the university you will have a chance and uh, those who want to do it we are more than willing to help um thank you very much sir uh, and the questions are over and okay. uh, i think all the doubts and questions are resolved uh, thank you very much today lecturer mr noan darmadas an area sales manager at Orana is Denmark for dedicating your valuable time to share your priceless experiences and vast knowledge with us. Thank you again, sir, for accepting our request and uh, give your knowledge to us. And uh, thank you very much, you all for staying with us. And uh, I would like to apologize uh, for the technical errors at the beginning. Uh, you first and uh, thank you very much uh, we will meet with another interesting lecture session again thank you very much thank you very much for having me it's really really a privilege for me to be able to speak to all of you those who are online thank you very much thank you sir thank you bye bye